Welcome back to Mayo Clinic Radio. I'm Dr. Tom Shives. And I'm Tracy McRae. Tracy, rabies. We're going to talk about rabies. (laughs) It is caused by a virus and it's fatal, but it is preventable. It can spread to people and pets if they are bitten by a rabid animal. And there have been multiple cases of people being bitten by rabid bats right here in the United States this year. Bitten and scratched, even easier. (laughs) What should you do if you are bitten by a bat or scratched by a bat? And what can you do to bat-proof your house? Joining us in studio to talk about rabies and bats is Mayo Clinic pediatrician Dr. Robert uh, Jacobson. Welcome back to the program. Thanks for having me. I'm sorry for that terrifying back picture that's behind you. People who are watching on YouTube, I turned around and saw it and just about spit out my water. It it does strike fear into people's hearts, and it it adds to the anxiety regarding uh, bats. Uh, Up until the 1940s, uh, almost all the cases in the United States of rabies in humans were transmitted by dogs. Uh, We had a big problem with rabid dogs. Uh, Leash laws and other laws... Uh, as well as the expectation that dog owners vaccinate their dogs against rabies has completely changed that. And um, rabid dogs are not the major vector. In fact, uh, most animals with rabies in the United States are wild, raccoons, foxes, skunks. Um, But most of our exposures to humans are actually in the form of bats. Uh, And there are things that we need to be aware of with bats. And one of the most concerning things is bat bites won't wake you up. Mm. Bat bites won't leave a mark. And so uh, we take very seriously when an adult reports they woke up in a room with a bat. We say we need to capture that bat and test the bat. And if we can't, we need to start the rabies series to prevent you from getting rabies. Is it true that it's a scratch or a bite? Well, it's actually the saliva uh, from the bite that gets into your bloodstream that causes rabies. And frankly, um, going into a cave where bats used to be or touching a cage that used to hold a bat isn't going to give you rabies. Rabies, bat urine won't transmit it. Um, uh, But we can't tell looking at a skin, whether it's a scratch or a bite. In fact, there's usually no mark. And when a bat hits you, we won't know if you were bit. That's, that means that any physical contact with a bat like that, where you're, 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 you're walking out in twilight and you're hit in the face by a bat, we have to treat you as though you might have been bitten. Ouch. Now, do bats want to bite you? No, they want to avoid us. We think that a bat that stays in your room while you're sleeping is probably ill. And that's why we are very suspicious of a a bat that you wake up with in your room. That's a very unusual behavior for a bat to stay in your room while you're in there. So we we take very seriously that we should test that bat. And about two or three percent of these bats test positive for rabies. Now, if you can't get the bat or if the bat can't be tested, then we start the series to prevent what is otherwise a fatal disease. How do you catch the bat? Well, the best way to catch it is in a way that leaves you protected from being bitten during the process and uh, allows you to take the bat safely to the state veterinarian for testing. Um, so we recommend that you take something like an ice cream bucket or a, or, or, or a salad bowl or a jar and you put it over the body of the bat as the bat is sitting on the wall or on the floor and then slide a piece of cardboard underneath it. Now it's best done with heavy gloves on. Uh, because, again, you don't want to end up con- uh, uh, coming in contact with uh, the bat directly. Um, and then getting a, a lid on the jar or a lid on the bucket and take that. Now, you can pay your veterinarian to have it go up to the, uh, uh, the state veterinarian, or you can bring it up yourself. Uh, there's instructions right on the Minnesota Department of Health website on how you manage that for us living in Minnesota. But across the country, every state has worked out a system for how you manage getting bats tested. And so if you're in Arizona, there are rules in Arizona that you can go on the Arizona Department of Health and find out how do I go about getting this bat tested. Getting the bat tested 
will take days, but you have days. In fact, we, we say that you have up to 10 days before we can start the series that we can get the tested, testing done. And usually it's done in one or two business days. Is, well, I've used a tennis racket to get rid of it, no. but I like your technique better. Unfortunately, with the tennis racket, you might shoo the bat out of the house, but then you got to start the series. Um, or you might, Ooh. as I recently had one of my parents uh, do with a shovel, crush the bat uh, and make the bat untestable. And again, you have to start the series then. And it's not just sleeping adults. A young child or an adult who's medicated, inebriated, or otherwise too ill to notice whether they were bit by a bat or, too un or unable to communicate, those people also need to start the series. We were told, you know, one of the things, because you couldn't be afraid enough of a rabid dog, but you'd have to get shots in your stomach. Exactly. Uh, I was told to, the same to thing. try to make you even more afraid like it was a problem. Is that how it happens when you need a rabies series? It is so much better than it used to be. We're talking about a highly purified vaccine. We have two of them in this country. Both are, are very purified, very safe and very effective. Um, uh, we've been using them in this country since the mid-1980s. Um, in fact, we learned over the last 30, 40 years, you only need four of the doses, not five. So if anything, it's not the 20 or 14 doses people grew up hearing. And in fact, it's no longer five. For most of us who, have, who are immune competent, we just need four doses. But we also need a special immunization that's not a vaccine it gives us antibodies called rabies immune globulin and we get that uh info if we had a bite infiltrated directly into the bite if there isn't a bite put someplace else in our body on the, on the first day when we're getting starting the vaccine series so for most of us it'll be five things. There'll be four rabies uh, vaccines done over 14 days, and it'll be one dose of immune globulin, rabies immune globulin. Is it painful? Well, it's, it, it is like any other shot. There's going to be stinging and hurting, but it is not as painful as some of the other vaccines we give, and it's certainly um, uh, uh, a lot less painful than the dog or the cat bite that you got. So I, I would say that uh, it, it is acceptable, manageable, and we uh, actually now um, go out of our way to reduce the pain with vaccines. Uh, we use vapor coolants. We use vibrating ice blocks. Um, we'll even put a patch of numbing anesthetic on the place where we're going to give the injection um, and give it 30 minutes to take away the pain. So people who are scared of the pain, we have ways of dealing it to minimize what that. What about uh, the, the tetanus booster can keep you safe, you know, for up to 10 years at a time? Is there a rabies booster? Well, there are for people who are, uh, are, are occasionally at risk or persistently at risk. Let's say that you're a veterinarian. Mm. You're dealing with occasional stray dogs brought in to be adopted, or you're dealing with a dog that is behaving ill. You do need to get a preventative series of rabies vaccine, and then every so often be tested to see if you need a booster. And um, uh, with testing, uh, for those that occasionally are persistently at risk, we can determine when you need a booster. Um, and uh, that's not for most of us. For most of us, we just need it when we've been exposed. Uh, travelers sometimes will need it when they're going away. If they're going spelunking someplace uh, in another part of the world, uh, they might very well need uh, to get a preventive series of rabies vaccines. And, and certainly your pets need to be vaccinated, including indoor cats, right? Yes, this is important. We manage to dramatically reduce rabies in our dogs and cats by vaccinating our pets. It's not just protecting the pet against rabies, it's protecting the pet owner. And um, as much as you want that cat to be an indoor cat, uh, there might be the accidental uh, escape that leads you to have a cat that's been outdoors. And you don't want to leave your cat at risk. You don't want to leave yourself at risk. All right. You know, there are bats with rabies in the United States and several cases of humans being bitten by rabid bats this year. Rabies is caused by a virus. It affects the nervous system, and it is fatal, And but it is preventable. If you've been bitten or think you've been bitten, talk to your doctor or go to your health department a department website, is that correct? Yes. Our thanks to Mayo Clinic pediatrician, Dr. Robert Jacobson. Thank you very much for having me.